O zaman başlayalım. Herkese merhaba. Hanımefendiler, beyefendiler, hayal kuranlar, merak edenler ama bunu koşulsuz yapanlar, başarısız olmaktan korkmayanlar, yaratıcılığı ortaya çıkardığı için de fikir ayrılıklarını sevenler, bunu vizyonla, cesaretle ve güvenle birleştirenler hepiniz buraya, e, üniversiteye, Türkiye'ye, Kayseri'ye hoş geldiniz. E, şimdi açılışı yapmadan önce yapmam gereken bir duyuru var. Bir telefon bulunmuş. Telefonunu kaybeden var mı? E, burada arkadaşlarımızı görüyorsunuz. Var galiba. İzliyoruz. <gülüyor> Nasıl vereyim? Şöyle arkadaşlarımdan. Evet, ilk problemi başarıyla çözmüş oluyoruz. Bundan sonra sıkıntısız geçmesi dileğiyle, an itibariyle artık başlıyoruz. Bugün burada 16 ülkeden, 34 şehirden, 150'den fazla katılımcı bulunuyor. Benim için bu ketkiler bu arada, kendimi tanıtmayı unuttum heyecandan. Bugün ve yarın bu kürsüde olacağım, sunumları ben gerçekleştireceğim. Oldukça heyecanlıyım ben de. Hepimizin burada bir araya gelmesinin sebebi zaten... <gülüyor> Hepimizin çok iyi bildiği gibi e, Connect for Creativity projesi. E, kuşkusuz e, yaratmanın başı önce düşünmek, hayal etmek. Bu projede önce bir hayal ürünüydü, önce bir düştü, sonra bir amaç haline geldi. Üzerinde e, çok fazla kişi uzun saatler boyunca çalıştı ve şu anda bir hayalin e, yaratıldığı anın e, ilk dakikalarını aslında birlikte kutluyoruz da diyebiliriz. Bugün ve yarın çokça konuşulacak bu dünyada ilerleyen kişiler, kurumlar, topluluklar ve ekonomiler hep kolları sıvayıp aradıklarını yaratan kişiler. Ve bu projede zaten yaratıcı keşif ve işbirliği imkanlarını desteklemek için ortaya çıktı. Kısaca proje hakkında bilgi verip hemen açış konuşmasını yapmak üzere Sayın Rektörümüzü buraya davet edeceğim. British Council önderliğinde Türkiye'den bu Bugün bizi burada ve yarın da misafir edecek olan Abdullah Gül Üniversitesi ve Atölye, Yunanistan'dan BIOS ve Sırbistan'dan Nova Iskra ortaklığıyla yürütülen bir proje. Toplamda 18 ay sürecek ve şu bilgiyi de vermek gerekir projeye dair önemli. Ee, Yunus Emre Enstitüsü'nün geliştirdiği kültürler arası diyalog programının da bir parçası. Ee, yarın e, ve bugün e, çok fazla üzerine konuşacağımız bir e, bulgu var aslında. O da şu, e, yaratıcılık ve kültürler arası çalışabilme yeteneği geleceğin iş gücünün en önemli 10 yeteneği arasında gösteriliyor. Dolayısıyla e, bu yeteneği, e, bu o, salondaki kişiler ve temsil ettikleri kurumlar acaba nasıl artırabilirler ve beraberinde e, yaratıcı endüstrinin gelişmesinde e, üniversitelere düşen rol nedir? Aslında temelde bu sorulara yanıt arayacağız bugün ve yarın. E, atölye çalışmaları var, grup tartışmaları var, paneller var. Ama hepsinden önce de elbette bir açış konuşmamız var. Bunun için de ben şimdi buraya e, Abdullah Gül Üniversitesi Rektörü Sayın Profesör Doktor İhsan Sabuncuoğlu'nu davet ediyorum. Thank you for uh, introduction. Uh, my welcome speech will be in English. But uh, önce bir Türkçe tüm katılımcılara, tüm bu organizasyona ve bu konferansa katkı sunan başta British Council olmak üzere tüm partnerlerimize çok teşekkür ediyorum. Uh, dear guest partners and uh, the valuable members of our Agu family, it is my pleasure and great honor to welcome you as a host of this conference at Agu. Uh, we have gathered here in the university um, for 
for two years, for two years work uh, within the framework of creative industries. Creative, I mean, why, why you move this? Yeah, we have gathered over here to discuss the, one of the strategic issues of today, creative industries, and also the role of why it is moving. <laughs> Another technical problem. Digital world is sometimes acting as a monster, you know? We try to develop technology, especially the digital technology, but sometimes it gets out of the control and move ahead. <laughs> technology is faster than us. Uh, can you go back to the original slide? Yeah, thank you. Okay, at least we managed to do it. Yeah, today, um, Universities or higher education institutes uh, are not only the places to share or transfer the knowledge, but these institutions are the are, you know, create environment where we also produce or create new knowledge and apply this knowledge for the benefit of the society. Considering the three important missions of the universities, one is education, second one being the research and creating the knowledge, but also societal impact that is the you know, uh, using the knowledge we create for the benefit of the uh, society. As you already know, most of the issues we face today, such as poverty, health, no, it doesn't go. <laughs> You see that I'm having a problem with the technology. <laughs> so, usually happens. Yeah. I have nothing to do with this. You know. I'm innocent. <laughs> Trying to, yeah. Done? It will work? For sure. Okay. Yeah, uh, most of the problems we face today in the world are common. And that simply go beyond the country boundaries. In fact, in fact, these problems are so severe and so multinational that in 2015, about four years ago, by the leadership of uh, former General Secretary of Ban Ki-moon, Ban Ki-moon, all the nations, all the countries in the world, maybe most of them, I don't know, but uh, I assume all of them, signed the agreement to contribute to uh, this United Nations 17 goals. It's very important. And Turkey has also signed this, uh, the agreement. The last, uh, this year, not the last year, this year, I had a chance to uh, listen to Ban Ki-moon in Seoul in one of the uh, conferences on sustainability. And I think that all the issues 
all the all the goals are so important that we need to work together hand by hand and our university since the very beginning of our establishment 2013 uh, ha uh, has been aligned quickly aligned with these goals and the uh, global issues as an example uh, in our university, regardless of the departments and the schools we have, all the students, no exception, all the students uh, take five global courses which are conducted by an interdisciplinary team of the faculty members, even the, some professionals and all the students from the different departments work in team uh, to deal with the global issues, to understand the global issues and also the possible solutions. And many other things we have in the university since the very beginning of our uh, early years. For that reason, in the even though we are a very young university, just a six years old, even a baby, newborn baby, six years old baby, we have awarded by Times Higher Education, which is the one of the finest universities ranking, you know, organization. Uh, we were ranked in the first 200 which is a, quite a bit significant accomplishment. And this is because of the, our emphasis on global issues and uh, university taking the step, putting to the third mission of the, uh, the higher education institutes, societal impact in front of the other missions. Why, I'm, why, I, why I am explaining all this, uh, you know, our, our partnership, our existence in the partnership, partnership of this event, this project uh, is in fact, a, you know, a right, contribution, being the right place by the right institution. We are not randomly selected. Because of the, our uh, vision and also the missions, we are the part of the, this project and we give the very much emphasis and importance. Now, just uh, another uh, example. Uh, how much we give importance to uh, global issues. Since the very beginning, you know, it was the 2013, everything was fine. The economy is, was, was okay. The worldwide economy was okay, and the Turkey economy was also okay. But we were, we, we have seen that unemployment problem is coming. And unemployment, especially the youth employment problem, is going to be one of the global issues, one of the global problems of today's society. For that reason, we started a youth employment symposium, international symposium since the very beginning, 2013-14. And we have so far organized the three symposium and uh, with the participants from the, I don't know, maybe 50 plus different countries, many, many hundreds people from uh, you know, uh, the universities, from public and private institutions, NGOs from everywhere and even the students. 
Okay, this is enough to uh, you know underline the importance of the global issues and the our university, uh, the, the emphasis and alignment. Um, Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, these global issues that we are discussing, you know, uh, climate, environmental issues, poverty, health, you know, sustainability, and many others, and all, also the, the issues that are considered in the United Nations Development Goals, require all these issues require global handling global handling and multi sectorial approach to be able to overcome these issues to be able to handle these issues we need to work hand by hand together all the countries and with different disciplines different sectors, you know, volunteers, NGOs, universities, private companies, public companies, or the institutions, you know, we have to work together. Traditional approach, the common traditional, existing traditional approach, so-called discipline-based approach, myopic and narrow you know approach doesn't work will not work stereotype solutions will not work it's just a waste of the time and effort believe me thus what we need to do we need to take a new approach. We need to also teach this new approach and new uh, the uh, alignment students. For that reason, um, as I mentioned at the beginning of my you know, welcome speech, uh, we have courses, multi, sectorial uh, and global courses we have. Many, many people contribute to these courses. One is other ways in which we discuss the global issues in general. Another one is health and food. And one other is sustainability or things like that. From the, uh, the, the people from the different disciplines come together like from life and social sciences, from engineering, from business school, you know, and, and sometimes NGOs participate to discuss the issues and their solutions. But the thing is that um, to be able to uh, solve these problems, we need a we need creative solutions. We need a creative solutions. That's why the creative industry is important. Creative industry is important not only for handling these issues, but also new generation. Now today, um, where is it? What happened again? It's, it's randomly operated, huh? So what's happening? Z, <laughs> uh, Gen Z, Z, Z, oh, whatever, Gen Z, huh? Look at their, look at their characteristics. This new generation is right now is about to do 20, 25 percent of the entire population worldwide 
in our country as well. But they have a very good properties. They have a very good properties. These properties are very much suitable for 21st century skills. But the, the thing is that this new generation currently with us, they are in the school, they are maybe in the workplaces, they have started their career in the workplaces. They are not aware of their potentials. But the one thing is, one thing is sure that this new generation needs creative industry to work in the future as a working place. They need the creative industries. They do not like the traditional jobs. They are not happy because they would like to be happy. They would like to be satisfied and happy. And to be to feel the happiness, to feel the happiness, they need to like the, the uh, what they are doing. And they would like to work in teams. They would like to communicate, and many many other properties they display to be able to satisfy this new generation. Maybe upcoming generation, alpha generation is coming. They have already born. We need a creative industry. We need to create creative industries. Uh, within this context, for two consecutive years in the past, we have worked together with Atelier Istanbul I, I see the representative of the Atelier Istanbul. And we sent our students to Istanbul every year. And anywhere from 15 to 20 students selected because they are, they are supported by the university. And they work uh, in the Atelier Istanbul, which is one of the uh, very good example for creative hubs, right? one of the excellent example from our country. And they work together with the Atelier Istanbul uh, experts in the number of projects. And what they do, they learn human-centric design. Human-centric design. Not the design, but human-centric design. And creativity, which is one of the uh, important and critical uh, skills that the uh, new generation should carry uh, in the future. Uh, of course, this interdisciplinary work, um, you know, and the, our hard work by the students and working with NGOs and local authorities in Istanbul, you know, produced a number of benefits and good results for the society. And I also thank you very much for the Atelier Istanbul uh, in collaborating with us in this project. These are the, some of the pictures uh, uh, of the, our students while they are in Istanbul and working together with the Atelier Istanbul in the different issues. What else I should maybe underline a few things. So in conclusion, uh, my welcome speech turned out to be a long one because of the technological problems. Uh, I certainly believe that this creative industries is becoming a strategic sector strategic sectors. I am sure that this project which has initiated and undertaken by the leadership of British Council will generate many useful 
and implementable ideas to lay down the, uh, the foundation for creative industries. And therefore, on behalf of my institution and myself, I would like to thank you all for your significant contributions and wish the best successes. And uh, also to thank to the, all of our partners, uh, in British Council, Atelier Istanbul, uh, institution from, uh, huh? What? Yunus Emre Institution, and also the contributors and the partners from the uh, Greece and Slovakia. Serbia? Apologize for misunderstanding. Anyway, thank you, and best, uh, I wish you the best success in this two days meeting. Thank you. Size bir kez daha teşekkür edelim. Herhalde bu konuşmanın manşetini atacak olsaydım ben bir gazeteci, gazeteci olarak da e, yaratıcı endüstriyi yaratmak zorundayız. E, bunu herhalde manşete taşırdım. Şimdi bu konu üzerinden elbette yine konuşmaya devam edeceğiz. E, sahneye Wider Europe Bölgesel Sanat Direktörü yine British Council'dan Clary de Brackley'i davet ediyorum. Hi, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, so yes, I'm Claire de Berclair. I'm the Regional Arts Director for the British Council for Wider Europe. Um, and really delighted to be here in, in Kayseri. Uh, thank you, Rector, and thank you for the welcome to uh, Abdullah Gul University. Um, it's great to be in this room with over 100 different creative professionals um, from 16 countries and 35 cities. Uh, and this is our second international conference as part of the Connect for Creativity program. Program. Um, I think you've already had a little bit of introduction to the program and many of you have been part of the previous conference, uh, but this is part of the Intercultural Dialogue uh, program led by the Yunus Emre Institute, um, co-funded by the EU uh, and the Republic of Turkey. And you know, the idea is really about looking at the role of creative hubs in terms of in in intercultural dialogue. Uh, and we at the British Council, uh, who, if you don't already know us, are the UK's cultural relations organization. So we're over 80 years old and represented in 110 countries around the world, uh, are really, really excited to be leading the project and working with our partners um, uh, from across the region. Um, we're really proud of our work in supporting the creative industries around the world. Um, we do that in lots of ways, uh, around supporting policy development, around supporting creative entrepreneurs and creative practice, um, and looking at making really uh, important links uh, to the UK and the rest of the world through the creative industries. Um, and Creative Hubs uh, has been one area of this work over the last few years and one that we're really uh, excited to be developing our, our practice with through this program. Um, we're particularly keen in that kind of interface between uh, uh, enterprise, digital technology, uh, and artistic practice. And so Connect for, Creative, Connect for Creativity is right up our street. Um, I think you will hear so much more over the next few days uh, about this, this important intersection between creative hubs and higher education. Um, but just a couple, I think, of interesting facts to kick us off. Uh, you know, creative hubs, I mean, they are really considered to be one of the key drivers in, in pushing forward the creative industries these days. Um, we know that there's now 1.2 million work people around the world working in creative hubs. Um, uh, and it generally picks up on a lot of trends about how the world is changing, as the rector was talking about to, to begin with, uh, around changing practice in, in terms of uh, SMEs, micro-businesses, collaborative working. Um, and, 
and lots of different skills for the workforce. So I think we're going to be covering all of this over the next couple of days. Um, I, I think simultaneously there's also been this trend around the role of universities uh, and creative hubs. Um, and that 7% uh, of all European hubs are now working out of or linked to universities. So this is obviously a growing trend and um, lots for us to sort of discuss and get our teeth into during this conference. I think for, for the, you know, first of all, you only need to walk into one of the creative hubs that we've been partnering with in this project, uh, whether that's Atole uh, here uh, in Istanbul, here in Turkey, uh, Bios in Athens, uh, Nova Iskra in, uh, in Belgrade, and Rabble Studios in, in Cardiff, just to feel that energy and actually how the role that creative hubs are playing in terms of some of the tackling some of the social issues, uh, economic development, and, and creative, uh, creative practice. Um, and I'm really particularly interested to hear from our partners at uh, Cardiff University uh, and the research that they've been doing in terms of the role of creative hubs for intercultural dialogue, and also hearing from, from many of you who are working at or representing universities uh, about uh, different models of how uh, universities and hubs are working together. I think Suffice to say, for us at the British Council, it's a really big area of interest, um, and it's really, I think, an important space for us to look at uh, cultural relations in terms of the UK and, and Turkey, uh, the region and, and around the world, um, but also a very, very important space in terms of uh, the role that creative hubs are playing, mo more importantly, in terms of intercultural dialogue. So um, I hope that you will have a, a fascinating couple of days, really excited to hear from the diverse range of speakers that we have here and thank you thank you all for being here and thank you all to all of our partners for for the collaboration on this project Açılış tan itibaren hep söylüyoruz bu proje e, Yunus Emre Enstitüsü'nün kültürler arası diyalog programının bir parçası diye e, şimdi de buraya e, Yunus Emre Enstitüsü'nden Nurullah Yavaş'ı davet ediyorum Saygıdeğer misafirler, hanımefendiler, beyefendiler, ee, Yunus Emre Enstitüsü olarak yürüttüğümüz AB Türkiye Kültürler Arası Diyalog Programı kapsamındaki Connect for Creativity projesinin Kayseri Konferansı'na hepiniz hoş geldiniz. Ee, British Council öncülüğünde e, Türkiye'den Abdullah Gül Üniversitesi ve Atölye Yunanistan Bayos ve Sırbistan Nova Iskra ortaklığında yürütülen projenin bir aşama daha kaydederek e, ikinci konferansını Kayseri'de gerçekleştirmesinden e, enstitü olarak duyduğumuz büyük mutluluğu ifade etmek istiyorum öncelikle. E, Türkiye ve Avrupa'daki yaratıcı pl platformların bir araya gelerek ağ kurması ve birbirleriyle daha uyumlu ve işbirliklerine açık bir şekilde kültürler arası diyaloğun teşvik edilerek sivil toplumun güçlenmesine katkı sağlamak amacıyla bu projenin gerçekleştirilmesini büyük önem arz ediyor. Ee, Yunus Emre Enstitüsü olarak yurt dışında 48 ülkede 58 kültür merkezi ve 50 ülkedeki protokolümüz olan 101 üniversite ile toplamda 159 temas noktamız aracılığıyla kültür arası diyaloğun gelişmesi ve kültürlerin birbirini daha yakından tanıması, tanıyarak işbirliklerini geliştirmesi amacıyla 10 yıldır çalışmalarımızı sürdürüyoruz. Türkçe, kültür ve sanat etkinliklerine ilave olarak e, Türkiye Akademik ve Bilimsel İşbirliği Projesi ile de dünya çapında bilim dünyası ile Türkiye arasında e, bağ kuruyor ve işbirliklerine katkı sağlıyoruz. Farklı kurumlar ile e, kültürler arası diyaloğun gelişerek insanların daha fazla empati kurması ve ön yargısız bir şekilde bir, e, birbirini tanımaya çalışması için çalışmalar yürütüyoruz. Bu noktada British Council ve ortak kurumları Abdullah Gül Üniversitesi, Atölye, e, Bayos ve Nova Iskra'nın yürüttüğü bu kıymetli projenin sonuçlarını büyük bir heyecanla bekliyoruz. Bu proje vesilesiyle e, siz kıymetli misafirler ile enstitü olarak bir araya gelmekten duyduğumuz mutluluğu tekrardan ifade ediyor. E, enstitü başkanımızın e, selamlarını e, e, ifade ediyor e, ve bu konferansın gerçekleştirmesi için e, katkıda bulunan herkesin e, emeklerini, e, emeklerinden dolayı şükranlarımızı iletiyor. Hepinizi saygıyla selamlıyorum.
Teşekkür ederiz. E, i̇ki tane önemli duyurum olacak. Birincisi e, herhangi bir konu hakkında bir soru sormak isterseniz ya da herhangi bir şeye ihtiyacınız olursa girişte zaten gördünüz e, üniversitenin gönüllü öğrencileri yaka kartları Ask Me Anything yazıyor. Onlar size yardımcı olmak için hazır bekliyorlar. Birincisi bu. Diğeri de e, az önce de söylediğim gibi e, burada e, konferanslar ve workshoplar düzenlenecek. Hemen yine girişte e, bir e, masa da workshop kayıtları alınıyor. İlgilendiklerinize e, arada kayıt yaptırabilirsiniz. Şimdi e, başından bu yana e, partnerlerden hep bahsettik. Cardiff Üniversitesi de bunlardan biri hatta en önemlilerinden biri. Çünkü bu proje için özel bir e, araştırma yapıldı. Connect for Creativity projesi kapsamında e, Cardiff Üniversitesi yaratıcı ekonomi ekibine yaptırıldı bu araştırma ve araştırma bulgularından da dikkat çekici sonuçlar çıktı. Tam da odaklandığımız creativity konusunda empati, katılım ve güçlendirme değerleri temel alınarak yapıldı bu araştırma. Şimdi sonuçlarını bize anlatacak iki güzel hanımefendi buradalar hemen çağırayım. Cardiff Üniversitesi Yaratıcı Ekonomi Direktörü Sarah Pepper ve etki analisti yine Cardiff Üniversitesi'nden Marlen Komorowski buraya davet etmek istiyorum. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome, everybody. And uh, to reiterate, my name is Sarah Pepper. I'm the Director of Creative Economy at Cardiff University, and I'll be presenting this morning with my colleague, Dr. Marlene Kamarowski, uh, and uh, she's also uh, working part-time with us at the university. And together, we have done this piece of research, which manifests in this document that you'll all have in your conference pack. So please do keep this to hand. It might be useful during the next hour's session. Um, so first off, I'd like to say a very big thank you to the British Council for inviting us to present the findings of this piece of work. Um, and I'd also like to, to thank the British Council for their insight to think about undertaking this piece of work. Because in the world as we find it today, and we've heard this from the rector this morning, it's very timely to be thinking about intercultural dialogue and the way we communicate with ourselves uh, in the countries we live in and across nations. I'd just like to start by reading a quote written by the British Council when they were commissioning this piece of research, because I think it sets the global tone uh, where we find ourselves today. The world faces a wide range of social, political, and economic challenges, migration crises, climate change, social and economic inequalities, terrorism, military conflict, and disruptive technology. We've seen the disruptive technology this morning. These create cultural anxieties and complexities that are powerful sources of discontent and tension, putting social cohesion at risk. I think this perfectly frames the environment in which we were thinking about intercultural dialogue and why it's really important. So it was this recognition of need for intercultural dialogue uh, that uh, encouraged, I think, uh, the British Council to think not just about this piece of research, but framing this research within the Connect for Creativity programme. And I, think it's, and I think it's really interesting that the context in which this piece of research is set is around the role of creative hubs. So there's been mention of creative hubs a couple of times this morning. It's been uh, an area of interest for us at Cardiff University for the last five years or so. And we have developed quite a lot of uh, thinking and expertise in this space as the development of, of, of creative hubs has happened globally. And this is something that has certainly been, been, been going on for the past 10, 20 years, possibly slightly longer than that. But it's interesting that this setting has been chosen uh, to think about creative hubs in, in this way. And as has already been mentioned this morning, creative hubs does map directly across to the growth and development of the wider creative industries, a sector that is not just growing in the UK at a rapid rate, but globally, a sector that is being recognised by governments across the world as a priority 
uh, sector and industries uh, for young people to start their working lives in and uh, of, of vital importance to economies across the globe. But creative hubs uh, have often uh, had lots of attention because of this direct connection to economic growth. And I think that's fair to say, and that is important to note. But I think to only think of creative hubs in that context would be to miss a vital part of their role and capability. And that is around the cultural and social environment in which we live as well. Creative hubs are really important places where ideas thrive where individuals can undertake their creative work, where they can thrive, and where communities can come together. They have an impact on, yes, individuals and communities, but also on places, the places in which they're located. And therefore, for this reason, it's really important that we're talking about creative hubs as real enablers in this sense. And I'd also like for a moment to touch on the role of those creative hub managers in the potential for enabling. Because for all the hubs that have been mentioned today and the other thousands of hubs around the world, it is those creative hub managers who are leading those organizations who are driving them in a way that enables all of the, the people who are located within them. So uh, this piece of work has been a five-month piece of work. It's been quite a rapid research uh, process. Uh, as we mentioned, it has been led by uh, Marlene and I at Cardiff University, but with partners in Turkey, Greece, Serbia, and the UK. Um, and we have also uh, been working with PhD student Seval Torgai, who I'd like to mention uh, for her input and contribution to the study. Um, and uh, particularly the hubs who've been mentioned this morning, BIOS, Atelier, Nova Iskra, and Rabble, who have been absolutely key in working through the research process. Everybody has been very generous with their time and thoughts, and it is thanks to all of the partners and participants that number some 150 contributors that have created this piece of work that we'll talk you through shortly. So I'd like to hand over to Marlene, who's going to talk through our research methodology, our process and findings, before I then come and talk to you a bit about our recommendations at the end. We'd then like to include everybody in the room in some discussion with the findings from the research, because uh, research uh, is important, it's important to share, but it's very important to reflect on and talk about what might happen next. So do keep in your mind questions that come up as Marlene is presenting, and then we'll bring everyone into the room with us shortly afterwards. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very excited to talk to you all about this research project. As Sarah mentioned, I was the lead researcher, so I uh, conducted the study and I was working on the methodology and so on. And first of all, I want to bring us all on the same page so we know what we talk about. So when we mention uh, creative hubs, what do we mean? We mean places, either physical or virtual, which bring creative and cultural professionals together. As has already been mentioned by the rector, which is very important to bring and connect these people. A creative hub is a convener providing space and support for networking, business development and community engagement within the creative, cultural and tech sectors. So we talk about all kinds of different hubs. This can be cluster organizations, co-working spaces, studios, creative centers, networks, online platforms, or any kind of alternative places. We kept this definition um, especially broad to be able to conduct an analysis of all kinds of different creative hubs. So when we then talk about intercultural dialogue, because that was the goal of this research project to analyze what impact creative hubs can have on intercultural dialogue, uh, we defined intercultural dialogue as a constructive and positive interaction between persons or groups which are culturally different from each other. Um, cultural diversity can be based on culture itself, nationality, religion, ethnicity, language, sexual orientation, class, gender, age, disabilities, health differences, geographic location, and more. So this 
definition is also inspired by UNESCO, um, where we really thought we don't only talk about different countries interacting with each other, but we also talk about minorities and other groups. So in this study, we asked more than 400 local creative hub experts, stakeholders, hub managers, um, people who work in creative hubs and so on in the four target countries, Greece, Serbia, the UK and Turkey, about the impact creative hubs can have on intercultural dialogue. We started in June, July with desk research, so we wanted to first see what actually exist already in research and what have other uh, people done in studying this context. Um, we have found that this is, as already Sarah mentioned, something that is not very common in research yet. So you find when you read Creative Hub literature, mostly literature about the economic impact. It's always about growth of um, the sector, it's about creating um, entrepreneurialism and creating more workplaces, but the actual impact hubs can have on intercultural dialogue and social uh, relations in the neighborhood, in the city, in the place, that is something that is almost completely overlooked so far. So that's also why we were very excited of being able to conduct this study, because we feel a little bit like pioneers in that area as well, and we are also see Connect for Creativity as a really pioneering project in that sense. Um, based on the desk research, we conducted a survey then in August, September, where we invited a lot of experts to respond and we could collect data from about 100 creative hubs in the four target countries. And then we additionally conducted four workshops in these countries with the um, different creative hubs that we have been working together, invited different experts, managers, um, people who work in these creative hubs to then engage, critically engage with uh, the findings of the survey and create new knowledge. And we specifically used um, pro, uh, an approach that I um, adapted, the participatory action research approach, meaning we didn't do these workshops only just to collect data and information from the participants, but we really focused on working with them together in creating something new. And basically, this is what you will see in the report, the findings of what we um, made. And as mentioned, we focused on four different countries. And creative hubs in different countries are very, very different. So first, we really wanted to make sure we um, look at the different contexts of these four countries and the hubs that exist there, and what is the actual status of hubs in these countries. And there are many differences if it comes alone to population. So the UK has 67 million inhabitants, um, Serbia only seven in comparison, similarly to Greece, which has 10, and Turkey is uh, the largest country in terms of population by 82 million. So alone this has an impact on the Creative Hub ecosystem. Um, different unemployment rates, different GDP, and so on. So uh, this is something important to keep in mind as well. And they are also, of course, in different phases of their economies and in, they are facing different uh, societal challenges, which I also find very important to mention. Of course, the refugee crisis, which has been something very important in recent years, has highly impacted countries like uh, Greece and Turkey, um, while the UK, in comparison, almost has no not Im been impacted in that sense, but just politically when we see something like Brexit happening. So all of this has an impact on the context of how creative hubs evolve in these countries. Um, and basically that's why we first looked based on the survey and on desk research. So we looked at a lot of different reports about the differences in these countries. Um, to understand these contexts. So first about Turkey. Um, Turkey, we found, has an internationally recognized creative hub ecosystem that is driven by private investment and is increasingly recognized by policy makers. Um, we came to this conclusion because there were a lot of responses from Turkey in the survey, so we identified more than 45 hubs who have responded to the survey. Uh, the majority of 
um, these ones are in, Tur in Istanbul in Turkey located, but also in other places like uh, Ankara, Izmir um, and, and other cities as you can see on the map. So Turkey's creative hub ecosystem um, has especially significantly developed during the last five to ten years. There has really been upsurge. Um, and if you look at the last couple of years, you see a turning point also in the policy perspective that it has been started to being recognized as an important sector and that uh, a lot of investment and development is being put into it. Greece. So for Greece, we really found that it has an emerging creative hub ecosystem. It's still in um, early development phase. Um, but that it has been very proven as something that is important for the resilience through foreign and private support to create these creative hubs in Greece. Um, the majority has been found in the survey in Athens as well, but also Thessaloniki or Mytilini. I'm not sure if I pronounced this correct. Um, but compared to Turkey, and this is also depending on the population size, of course, there has been um, not as many creative hubs so far. But there is a growing tendency at the moment. So um, since the recovery period of the financial crisis, uh, the creative hub ecosystem has been also seen as one of the driving forces um, of the recovery from the financial crisis and the creative and cultural industries has been an increasingly more important contributor to the uh, GDP in Greece. Um, and we have identified around 10 to 20 hubs in the country itself at the moment. If it comes to Serbia, we have found that there is new public recognition and the beginnings of a growing creative hub ecosystem in Serbia. So similar to Greece, it's also in a more early stage development phase at the moment. Uh, we have found that there are a lot of hubs in Belgrade, of course, uh, also similarly to Turkey and in the UK. It's very cent centered um, around bigger cities, so, uh, but we also have found it in different cities in Serbia. Um, since there has been a lot of focus on European integration um, that enabled growth in the local creative and cultural industries, the creative industry sectors account now to also a quite large share of Serbia's GDP. Um, there has been an increasing number of co-working, co-living spaces, startup centers, creative hubs and other uh, places in Serbia since the last couple of years. And uh, they are mostly located in, in uh, like I mentioned, in the capital. And finally, UK. Uh, we call it Europe's powerhouse for creative production and it has a really striving creative ecosystem. As most of you know, the UK has been a forerunner if it comes to creative industry development. Um, it is one of the most developed countries. It ranks fourth place in the top 20 creative good exporters worldwide and is among the top cultural goods and services importers as well. Uh, there are hundreds of creative hubs which are located in different places. As you see, most of them we have found in the survey in Cardiff because our analysis focused on Wales. But of course, London and other places in the UK have also a lot of uh, hubs and creative industry is striving there. So to the findings, now that you understand the context of the hubs, meaning you know that there are different social and economic uh, contexts happening and the creative hub ecosystem is also at different stages of development, we wanted to look a little bit more into what now creative hubs actually mean for intercultural dialogue. So based on the survey, we found that 75% of survey respondents agree that creative hubs enable intercultural dialogue in some way. This was quite surprising for us because we still had in our mind creative hubs as something that as, as entities that are more seen as an economic uh, driver. But many of the survey respondents already said yes, they are actually having an impact on intercultural dialogue. And we then f uh, really wanted to find out, okay, but on what levels can creative hubs create intercultural dialogue? 
So in this graphic you see a lot of different terms of what has been mentioned in the survey and in the workshops of with whom creative hubs create intercultural dialogue. And we can dig a little bit deeper into this. So we developed this framework of creative hubs having an impact on a micro level, meaning the hub on, uh, with the di within the hub directly in the space, at the meso level, meaning the surroundings, so the creative hub has an impact on creating intercultural dialogue with the neighborhood or the city, and on a macro level, meaning across borders, because creative hubs can really um, also create an impact with uh, other countries as well. And you can see this here visually uh, represented with the creative hub in the middle. So the surroundings, the neighborhood, locally and internationally. So to give you some examples of how we came up with these different um, categories, nine out of 10 creative hubs are reported to have a diverse group of hub members in the survey. So people actually said, when I go to the creative hub and work there, or the managers reported, there is a very diverse group of people you can meet. So that's basically what is happening on the micro level. If it comes to local embeddedness with the neighborhood and the surrounding city, we have found, for example, that creative hubs really engage with the local ecosystem in the neighborhood. We had an example, which you can find in the report of Bios the hub in Greece, which um, really works together with the local Pakistani um, minority group in the neighborhood where the hub is located. And if it comes to international connections, 67% of creative hubs presented in the survey have reported to have international connections. This can be through uh, working together in projects like Connect for Creativity, for example. And besides these more um, geographical levels, micro, meso, and macro, we also wanted to look at with what different culturally different groups do creative hubs um, also create intercultural dialogue. And we found that there are also three major groups. Um, the first being the, that there are people from different countries. So these are the international connections people from minority and disadvantaged groups, and people from different work backgrounds and skills. And different work backgrounds and skills is also something that we found as really important because only by bringing all of these different people, uh, artists and scientists, as has already been mentioned already in the speeches today, together, uh, really intercultural dialogue and something new and innovative is happening as well. So some numbers as well from the, from the results. 50% of creative hubs offer international events. So they invite international people to their hubs, um, which shows that you can meet other people from, from different countries. That there are um, connections with the different skills and, and backgrounds, as I mentioned. And 50% of the represented creative hubs in the survey have, report, have specific activities that target local disadvantaged groups. So this can be, for example, um, projects about social entrepreneurship, where uh, projects try to help people with um, uh, disadvantages and so on. You will find a lot of examples for these kind of activities in the report itself. And finally, we also wanted to know um, how creative hubs create intercultural dialogue. So we asked our experts in the survey and in the workshops, and again, you will see this nice overview of all the different activities that we have identified. And there are four main ways to make it a little bit easier to identify what kind of activities exist, which we call encounter, communication, discourse, and learning. To give you some ideas and examples of what does this mean, 97% um, of creative hubs are platforms for encounter of people from different cultures. So this was based on the survey result where they said, when uh, we asked in the survey, if you go to an event or if you go work in the creative hub, do you actually meet other people from different countries? And 97% of the respondents said yes. Um, creative hubs are enablers for communication, discussion, negotiation through services and events. So this is, for example, uh, when the creative hub helps with translation services, it creates uh, 
knowledge for its members uh, uh, to um, communicate and go into contact with people and discuss issues. 40% of creative hubs have cultural diversity and intercultural dialogue in some way integrated as goals in their mission statements. So this means, for example, that people who want to become a member of a creative hub have to sign a contract and a behavioral statement of how they want to interact and how open uh, they are supposed to be within the creative hub. And 50% of creative hubs have reported in the survey to do to offer courses and trainings to develop intercultural competences. So they are not only enabling this, but they are also actively supporting um, knowledge and skills in intercultural dialogue. Um, what we have also found, and there was especially in the workshop, which we found interesting, what are then the issues? Why um, is this not discussed a lot and what is maybe happening there? Uh, we have found that there are limited resources to create actions and activities that enable intercultural dialogue. Um, that there's quite often a wrong mindset and that organizations often stand in silos while they should open, for example, creative hubs working with universities together. But I think this will be much more detailed out by Sarah in the last short section to present our call for actions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marlene. Okay, so um, I think you can see by now that there's lots of evidence for the potential of intercultural dialogue. And actually, the research clearly found that lots of this activity is already happening. But there's still room for lots more to happen and therefore to have a greater impact. So what we wanted to do was create some recommendations um, for people working in hubs, for people managing hubs, and for stakeholders working in the hub ecosystems uh, so that they could think about how uh, we could all together um, enable more intercultural dialogue through hubs in the future. So the first um, point was about uh, developing an understanding of the importance and value of intercultural dialogue. So it's really important uh, that intercultural dialogue needs to be better understood in the context of creative hubs and, and around creativity. So to achieve this, creative hubs and a range of their stakeholders need to have a shared understanding of intercultural dialogue and the opportunities and challenges involved. So in order to do that, we recommend three things. Firstly, wider communication of the findings contained in the report to creative hubs globally via any networks that we have through the British Council or through other partners so that we can start more of a dialogue around the value and contribution of this kind of activity. We also felt there was a strong recommendation to share the report with policymakers in all of our different countries um, so that, that people working with us in, at local and national government uh, could understand more about the potential of the soft power and the other um, social and cultural benefits of undertaking this kind of activity. And thirdly, we felt that there was a recommendation for further analysis of the value of intercultural dialogue in different hubs and communities in other settings. Obviously, the research was limited to four nations. Uh, we could make a judgment that a lot of the findings may be similar in other places, but they may reveal different things as well. So it's always useful to expand out the survey sample. So second, the second set of recommendations... Uh, the second set of recommendations are around supporting hubs, partners, and other stakeholders to engage in intercultural dialogue. As we've said, lots is happening, but there's lots more that could be encouraged and enabled with greater understanding. So it's important for creative hubs and their stakeholders to be informed about the range of ways that are available to develop strategies and activities to undertake and develop intercultural dialogue. So that to do this, there needs to be a greater sharing of methods to incorporate this work into hubs. And cultural organizations and public and private sector organizations in intercultural dialogue should be encouraged to forge collaborations and work together in this space. So we recommend three different things here. First, developing and delivering some kind of communications and engagement campaign to promote ways to engage in intercultural dialogue for hubs, partners and stakeholders, making really visible what's happening but hasn't really been shared on that level previously. 
We recommend the creation of resources to support this. So, for example, a toolkit or some kind of guide uh, to think about what these opportunities are and how practical steps about how to do this with guidance. And thirdly, developing communications collateral to share with stakeholders and policymakers so that they understand how they can get involved in this kind of activity. And third recommendation uh, is around um, analyzing, measuring, and monitoring outputs and impacts. What we found with all of this activity around intercultural dialogue and creative hubs, it was all happening, but it was quite invisible. There was no way of, of drawing uh, a, a kind of measurement of what was happening because we couldn't find any research that had done this previously. So to prove impact and value, it's really important to continue to analyze and mon monitor intercultural dialogue activity in the creative hub sphere. So additional insights will help clarify our understanding, understanding and assumptions in these spaces and therefore enable us to inform policy makers and different stakeholders how to create new strategies. So we would recommend undertaking further research in this area in other countries and other hub contexts so that we get the fullest picture of what is going on and what could happen in the future. I know that the Connect for Creativity uh, program going forward um, is going to be doing a number of other activities, one of which I think is a visit by some policymakers to the UK um, next year. This is exactly the kind of opportunity where this kind of discussion can happen and where we can share more insights. So there's lots to do in this space. There's lots going on, that's important to say, but we're all still learning. This is quite a new way of talking and thinking about this activity, um, and, and that's why, as I said at the start, we were inspired that the British Council was keen to put more inquiry um, into doing this. So I think one point that, that Marlene mentioned at this uh, at, during her presentation is sort of a word of caution though. Any intercultural dialogue activity within hubs requires resources, requires finance, requires understanding, requires knowledge, and requires commitment. And um, it's really important, I guess, that there's a bit of a health warning here that this work is important, is valuable, and has a great deal of potential, but it also does require quite an investment from the hubs, the hub managers, the communities they exist in, and all of the partners around. But if that all comes together, then I think there's potential for something quite special um, to happen. Okay, right, so that finishes the, the, the findings, the recommendations, um, and we'd like to hear a bit from you um, about your thoughts in this space. So we're going to try and use some technology to do this. Um, if that doesn't go so well, we may just go to a QA. and a um, But... <coughs> So, I think, here we are. So, if everybody has a mobile phone, uh, if you could all get out your, your mobile phones, because um, we're going to need to connect to um, uh, create, what we're going to try and do is create five word clouds together to get the temperature in the room as a response to some of the things that we've been talking about and to see what other activity is happening to make visible all of that. So, the first, um, if you go to www.menti.com and then you need to put in that code 898535. Okay, right, somebody's already on. So if you're there, if you could respond to this question, where have you traveled from to be here today? Okay. This is wonderful. Okay, any, any more additions? How are we doing? Okay, wonderful, this is, this is building beautifully. <laughs> okay, I'll give you five more seconds, any more additions? Okay, right. We'll call a stop to that one now. That was your warm. That was your warm-up exercise. Um, thank you. That's brilliant that everybody is able to to get on and the technology is working. Um, so yes, a really international and uh, diverse room. Uh, welcome everybody from all the different places you've come. Okay, we'll we'll go on to the second question. Here we are. Okay, so. 
Um, the second question we'd like to ask you is, what is your role or connection to Creative Hubs? I, do you work in a hub? Are you a hub manager? Do you work in, are you a partner of a hub? Are you a, okay, a researcher, who we are? Yeah, have you been to an event in a hub? That's a good point. <coughs> I like curious. Whoever's curious. So we've got founders, managers, students, researchers, volunteers, fantastic. The larger words um, are where more people are putting the same thing. So the size of the text um, shows us some kind of picture of volume here. So lots of participants, managers, researchers, and students. Okay. So I guess this picture gives us quite an interesting look at the, the different dynamics and relationships that people have to this environment. So I think there's lots of things we talked about that come from the different perspectives of, of people in the room. Okay, now we're going to go on to our next question, please. Okay, now because of the way the software works, we may have to get you to put into a, a new code into the, into the Mentimeter. Um, how are we doing? Oh, let's try. Okay, hang on. Okay. So, I'm sorry, you're going to have to put in a code again. If you go back to the software, this is the last time to do it. So, menti.com. The code this time for the last three questions is 385706. You need to refresh the website. Yeah, you might need to refresh the website and put it in again. Okay, great. So we've got some people in. So what activity do you currently engage in around intercultural dialogue? is great okay so lots of research happening here events exhibitions this conference <laughs> yeah brilliant Okay, a long, a long list and a growing list. Oh, that very much um, concurs with the research activity that we saw, that the list of activities uh, was very broad and involved uh, everything from attending events to training to uh, workshops um, to having specific roles uh, that people were taking on around different projects. Residency programs. Okay, great. That's a, that's a really interesting, rich picture. I, I, w I guess what we'll try and do is take images of these afterwards and see if we can share them back, back with the room. Okay, right. So we'll go on to our next question. And in terms of those activities that you've just listed, can you share with us the different groups that you undertake that intercultural dialogue activity with? Again, Marlene shared in the research findings lots of different groups that we found from the activity. We just like to assess from the room. Minority groups, uh, is it international people, people with different skills or backgrounds? These were the three major groups.
Okay, again, so lots of crossover with the kind of different groups that we saw through the workshops and through the survey, but nice to see it build from people's real lived experience in the room, um, mapping onto a whole range of di diverse different groups here. So I think that's a very, a very rich picture. Students featuring very highly in a lot of these polls this morning, which is, which is good to see. Okay, right, so we'll go on to our final question. And I guess this relates very much back to the recommendations, which is how we're trying to encourage this room of people to um, uh, take some of these ideas going forwards to enable more intercultural dialogue. Because I guess the priority here is for us all to think about different ways that we can go back into our environments and encourage more of this activity by either working with partners or others or learning from what we've done or so on. So how, what further activity will you do to enable more intercultural dialogue activity in the future if when you, you leave? do whatever you wanted, what would that be? <laughs> oh yeah, limit, limitless budget, limitless resources. A Europe-wide project. I like that one. No shortage of ambition in the room. Everything. That's yeah. also great. <laughs> yeah. Who said everything? I like that. <laughs> All the things. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, this is really inspiring. There's lots here that is very practical, but there's also some interesting points coming up here, like listening, for example. So there's so much about intercultural dialogue that is taking away those soft skills as well as um, the very practical outputs. Okay. As I say, we'll try and get pictures of the word cloud to share back afterwards. Thank you for participating in that. Fortunately, the technology did enable us uh, on, on, that, on that instance. Um, uh, I guess we have a couple of minutes if there are any questions for Marlene or myself to open up to the floor. Before, I'm conscious that we're in the slot before coffee, so maybe everybody's ready for coffee. Are there any questions from the, from the room? Okay, well, you're very welcome to, we'll be here yeah. today and tomorrow, so we're very, very happy to take questions if anybody wants to chat in person or go over anything in more detail, and um, many thanks once again. Thank you. Kahve molası vereceğiz, 45'te tekrar burada görüşmek üzere.